So UI panels, this is an interesting topic that one of my commenters recently raised and I thought why not do a video on it. If you're deep into contact scripting and you're hitting a point where you've got lots of controls and you're wanting to show and hide a lot of them, UI panel is exactly what you need. So let's jump straight in and take a look at that today. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. Let's take a look at UI panels. So as mentioned, this was something that was brought up in a comment in one of my previous YouTube videos. So make sure if you are interested in a particular topic and you might like to hear about it from me, why not suggest it below in the comments? UI panels was a good question. Basically, what did they do? What, how do they work and what is their point? Now to answer that, let me show you something first. If I jump into contact and I look up a library called Subversion, this is a library that I worked on with Dark Force Audio that they brought out recently. I helped design the UI interface and kind of scripted the whole interface that we see here. As part of the features, it has these different interchangeable blocks. So basically you can flick through and select extra layers, EQ, saturation, delay, all that sort of fun stuff. Every time you click one of these buttons, it's showing a different set of controls. And the way that we have to do that is we basically have to show and hide control. We declare and create all the controls, position them all, and then we only make some of them available to see. Now I've taken a look at this before in a video and I'll leave that linked above and below for you. In that video, I take a look at my Collider Sky library and basically how I use an info button to hide all the controls, switch to a different background that provides some details about the library, like an info button. That system uses the very simple command of hide part. And I've knocked together a quick example for us today to take a look at and then how we can adjust that to incorporate UI panels. So in here in Sublime Text, which I'm using to edit the text, I've got a very simple script. I've got my basics, which is my usual make perf view, my set UI height and width, and of course my clear out messages command. And then I've got my declared UI controls. I've got a button, a label, a slider, and a knob, and I've just simply set the position for them. I've set the text or anything in particular, like the width of the label, that sort of thing and I've made all of them persistent. Let's copy this script across to contact so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so I copy it across, bring it into my script editor, and I'll just pop it straight into the first one here, it doesn't really matter, hit apply, and there we go, that's what our interface looks like. Now down here, we have an on UI control, and that is doing the show hide function of this button. Basically, whenever I click this button, it's going to be either hiding or showing the parts, depending on whether it, the button's off or the button's on. So if I click this one and it's on, then it's gonna show all the parts because the button is equal to one. So hide part, nothing. If I click that off, it's gonna hide all of the controls and I can just toggle that on and off really easily. The hide part control is a very simple command. It's basically hide something. What do you want to actually hide or show? And do you wanna hide it? Do you wanna show it? Do you wanna hide just the background? There's a lot of different commands. The main two is hide whole control and hide part, nothing which means that you're not hiding any of the controls. So basically show control. I only have three knobs, sliders, and you know UI elements on this simple script. So it doesn't take a lot to hide and show it. But if you think back to Subversion for a moment, there's a lot of controls in each one of those pages. For instance, when I click the layers button, I want to show these controls, but I also want to hide the EQ ones, hide the saturation ones, hide the delay buttons. And then I need to do that for every EQ, saturation and delay button. That is an exhaustive process that would lead to a lot of code because there will be a lot of hide part commands throughout. So the solution is a UI panel, which basically acts like a group. It groups all the controls together and then you just show and hide that panel, which reduces your on UI control command to just a few different lines, really easy. So if I go over to a second example script that I have here, I've made a few changes. I've added in a new section called declare panel. So first of all, we have to declare that panel and it's a very simple process. I've declared the UI underscore panel and given it a name. It's still an integer variable, so it still has the dollar symbol at the front there. And I've just called it panel for convenience. The other thing that I've done, and I do this as a habit for pretty much all controls, all variables that I create, I've created an ID variable and assigned the get UI ID command to it. A lot of commands inside contact use the name of the variable. So you just pop the name, you know, dollar sign panel there. However, also a lot of commands use the ID, which is a unique identifier, a number that's associated with every variable that you create, specifically every UI variable. So like knobs, sliders, panels, tables, whatever. So basically I created a very simple empty variable and I called it panel underscore ID. So I always just take whatever I call the variable and just assign it with an underscore ID. ID. That's just my naming convention. Declare a blank variable called panel ID and then I assign it the get UI ID of panel. So basically it finds a unique identifier for the variable panel which I just created and assigns that number to the panel ID. So then if I need the panel's name 
then I can use this one. If I need the unique identifier, I can use this one. So it just gives me those two variables to use throughout the rest of the script. And I've gone through and I've added that to every variable that I want to show and hide as well, because I will, I will end up needing that. Now I've created the panel, then I need to assign my controls to that panel. So you could create a number of panels, such as in Subversion, where I had a panel for EQ, a panel for layers and so on. And you can group the different controls to that panel. And then you just show and hide that panel. So down here under each of these variables that I wanted to show and hide, which is the label, the slider and the knob, I've added a line at the bottom here, which is a set control path. This is setting a control parameter for or the variable label, for example. It accepts three parameters. It's saying, what are you attacking? So first of all, it's the label and it requires the identifier. So I'm using the label ID to get the identifier code. And then it's saying, what do you want to do to that? Well, I want to set a control par parent panel. This is setting the panel to the control. It's saying we want to create and, and group it up with this particular panel so that anything you do to the panel, it will happen to that control as well. And then of course, what panel do you want to actually attach it to? Well, the panel ID. And again, you need that ID version, not just the panel version. So all I've done with that command is I've attached the label variable to the parent panel. And in doing that, I can now control the label by controlling the panel. And I've done that, of course, for the slider here and the uh, knob here as well. So all three of them are controlled. And then down here, I just need to hide the panel or show the panel. It's very, very simple. And that's literally all there is to it. I've just grouped it together into one panel. And then in any of the like on UI controls, I can show and hide that panel really easily. Condensing that code, that enormous code of like 40 hide part commands down to one line. And that is really, really good. So let me just copy that across to contact, create a new instrument there. And we we'll jump into the script editor. And again, just pop it in, hit apply. And look at that, it's doing exactly what it did before. Now though, it's using the panel to do it, not a huge amount of code at the bottom. So it really is that simple. It's really straightforward. So I hope you've enjoyed that one. And I hope that's answered some of the questions of the original commenter as well. There are plenty of contact tutorials on this channel and plenty more to come, I'm sure. So why not consider subscribing if that's something you're interested in? But this channel also does music production, film score stuff, composition, we look at orchestration, all sorts of things, and plenty more to come as well. This channel is really only just getting going. So why not consider following along if that's of interest to you? So so if you subscribe on the way out, in that case, I will catch you in the next one.